this is Rob Bauer and today in Tux Turbo Talks we're talking to Nicole Van der Rey of the Koning Quick Step about the Tux Pro Classic. It's Friday the 11th of October and the end of the cycling season is approaching very rapidly but not before the final monument of the year is being written in Lombardia this weekend. And also before we might see a stormy Tux Pro Classics being written in the Netherlands. And since this is the Tax Turbo Talks podcast, we'll obviously be zooming in on this one-day race in the Netherlands. And we're going to do that with no one else than Mikkel Honoré of the Koenig Quickstep. Welcome, Mikkel. Thanks for being our guest this week. Yeah, thanks for, for letting me, me come and uh, join this podcast. So you're at the airport, you're on your way to the Netherlands. Are you ready for a stormy race? Yes, um, Let's let's say it like this that in the in Denmark it's also quite stormy as, as in the Zeeland region in in Netherlands. So I'm, yeah, quite prepared and looking forward for for this race and and hopefully it's gonna be be windy and quite exciting. Is that the conditions that you look forward to mostly when there's a bit of wind and maybe even a bit of rain? Being a Viking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's a great uh, benefit for us as a team. Um, we ride very well together and we have a very strong and and clever and experienced team in, in riding in crosswinds too. Of course, there's also many Dutch teams that are very good at this. But I think it's our benefit and the race will be harder if it's, if it's going to be a windy, uh, windy day tomorrow. Yeah, you came in uh, this season, it's your first season as a pro and you're riding with the Koenig Quickstep. But before, you've got some experience riding in Belgium and the Netherlands probably from your time when you were, uh, when you were under 23. Um, yeah. So you're kind of like familiar with the circumstances, or? Yeah, um, yeah, since since I was a junior or even under 17, I, I rode in in the in the Netherlands, and it's always uh, really nice racing. Like in under 23, one of my actually my first race as under 23 was a, a Dutch race called Stefansvalle, and that was really. A really windy one as well and on small roads. So I think it's going to be something similar tomorrow. Even more windy for sure because we are near the sea. So it's uh, it's always nice to ride, ride in the Netherlands. Um, I really enjoy enjoy the roads there. Of course, it's also uh, beautiful uh, when you are a bit more south, maybe in the Limburg region. Um, but yeah, every region has its, its nice and, and not so nice sides, I think. So if you would have to uh, could pick sort of where you would ride preferably, would it be more in the hills, maybe in the Limburg region, or more like the flat, open, white roads in the Zeeland region? Yeah, I would say more in the, a bit more hilly, hilly region, like in Limburg. I think one of my best experiences this year was actually the Amstel Gold Race. It was amazing, and yeah, with the crowds and with the beautiful roads and great weather as well. Um, I think that's for sure one of my yeah favorite races uh, from this season looking back and uh, but yeah for, for me I also like of course the Zeeland region I never been there so um, so maybe you should ask me tomorrow <laughs> afternoon if I like it or not <laughs> Yeah, well, I can probably tell you what you're up for. It's going to be 204 <laughs> kilometers. It's basically going to be pen flat, no elevation at all, and it might be <laughs> some rain and a lot of wind. So, <laughs> oh, wow, that's that's that sounds great. It's a, it's a it's for sure a nice recipe for some exciting racing. So, I think that's that's perfect. Uh, you guys coming in there with uh, Elia Viviani is uh, his final race for the Koenig Quickstep. Um, your main card when it comes down to a sprint, but I've read there's also some uh, riders who are going to have like a free roll to ride in the crosswinds. Are you one of the riders who's going to have a free roll, or what's your role going to be? Um, I think like like when it's crosswinds, it's really important to stay good together as a team because when you're together as a team, you can really support each other well in in the wind. You know, staying in the drafting behind each other. So I think like yeah. We will see, of course, uh, with the crosswinds. But if we stay well together as a team, and maybe we, if we are able to split it or, or whatever, then um, yeah, we will see what will happen. It's always really hard to to say how it's gonna end these races. But if it's down to sprint, I, I say Elia is a really, really good good card to have, and I'm sure that yeah, 
both all of us in the team and, and himself want to finish uh, off, off well this uh, these years he had in, in quick step and especially after this season uh, becoming European champion also in the Netherlands so I think he's and we are really really motivated for for tomorrow and probably with some really strong riders as well with uh, Tim de Klerk the tractor uh, Seneschal Kaiser. <laughs> So it's probably got to be uh, for him to be hiding behind those uh, those backs from those guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. If we look at sort of like back at your season, because it's been a long season for you. You started in, already in the Tour Down Under in January, and now we're in October. And after this one, you're still going to going to China. Um, yeah. What is your what is the main takeaway for you for your first year as a pro? What, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, I would say, like, as you say now, you know, I started in, in Australia and now I'm going to finish in China. So the season cannot really be be any longer. Um, so I think the most important lesson from, from this year is to, you know, be really good at um, resting when it's necessary. So when you have such a long season, it's it's so important and crucial to, to rest well and uh, to rest well at the right moments. And then um, I think that's that's really important as a as a professional rider to to know how to to click off your mind uh, and yeah, enjoy some the moments and then to you know click on again and then become uh, very uh, focused for for the next races. I think that's really really important thing and that's something I can see on the on the on the big riders um, that that's something they they really have. And that's also what keeps them, you know, always on the top. So I think that's, I would say that would be the most important lesson I learned this year. Are there any specific distractions for you when you are like not racing that you get this rest or other activities that you're doing to take your mind off of cycling? Um, yeah, you know, in the past, uh, I must admit this year, I haven't been able to, <laughs> to do much as I, as I lived in, moved to Italy. But beforehand, I always been going... Uh, fishing a lot or, or even sailing with my brother that, that I like really much to to like uh, cut off your mind completely um, yeah otherwise this year I mean it's been so been so busy traveling so I've been basically being at home watching movies or, or doing some stuff with my, my girlfriend uh, for most of the time um, so yeah have you been uh, re-watching Mad Men? Because I've read that you were a massive Mad Men Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't watched it twice yet, but uh, that might happen now on, on this trip to, to China because I know we have some long travel days and transfers, so maybe maybe it would happen happen there for sure. It's something I should get uh, get downloaded before I get there. So. Yeah, you, you already mentioned the Amstel Gold Race was one of the highlights. Was it the highlight or was there another moment this year that you thought this is the absolute highlight of, of the year so far? Um, like experience-wise, I would maybe also say doing the, my first uh, Grand Tour, uh, the Giro d'Italia. I think that's also for sure a very important step for my development this year. Um, I learned a lot from, from the three weeks racing down there and yeah, it's it was like one of the moments in the Giro, like riding up the Montirolo in the Queen stage in the in the like almost zero degrees and and rain was it sounds really horrible. Was also quite fantastic at the same time. Um, and uh, I would say yeah, the Giro Italia, like for my experience for the future, was really really important. I think you mentioned before the season that one of your goals was to uh, sort of like build your endurance, getting a bigger engine. I think you showed in a lot of races that that's definitely happening. Uh, do you already have goals for next season? Um, yeah, um, it's for sure something like I'm, I'm thinking about at the moment, you know, what to further develop on and where to maybe put more focus um like for next year for sure i have uh, I, w I have some goals like in the, in the spring to to do really well in, in some races and, and help the team as much as possible and of course maybe later on when uh, when there is a possibility i also have 
um, ambitions for myself to to maybe get a get a really nice result. Um, but yeah, it's something in in a few weeks we discuss together with the sports directors in the team in our team meeting, and then uh, yeah, I know a lot more for my own goals and etc. for for the next season. One of your favorite races is being ridden this weekend, uh, Lombardia, and you're not there. Um, yeah. <laughs> How, is that hard for you or is it realistically that you think like, oh, I'll be there in a couple of years or I'll be there next year? Or Yeah, it's it's something like that. You know, I, I'm, I, of course, it was always nice to do, but I'm also thinking, you know, if it's not going to be this year, it's going to be next year or, or somewhere somewhere else in the near future. So it's it's OK for me. It's it's just a fantastic race. But. Now I'm doing the the tax classic, so it's also another fantastic race, hopefully. So, it's it's okay. I mean, it's uh, still my first season, and um, it's also yeah, it's fine to do the tax race before we leave to to China as well. And yeah, well, it's it's like it is. Do you already have some plans for after China? How are you going to spend the off season? Is some holidays coming up or? Yeah, I'm gonna go to Santorini with my girlfriend for. A little week, a small week, and then um, yeah, I also decided to spend more time with my family since I live abroad and yeah, stay a bit with my family comes down to me, uh, and then uh, yeah, we're gonna stay a bit together, and then I'm also gonna go come home to to Denmark to stay with friends and and see my old friends that I, you know, don't don't have much time to in, during the season, and yeah, I mean it's most of stuff that. I don't have time to. That's what I want to focus and prioritize for this off season, and maybe not travel too much either, because yeah, it feels like we've been traveling constantly this season. So um, yeah, I think that's mainly what I'm what I'm going to use my time at. <laughs> and you already mentioned that it's going to be like a, you're going to be sitting down with a, with a team later on so that's already in a couple of weeks do you already know when your camp is when that first day is that you got to be back training with the team yeah like our first training camp will be in i think 9 or 10th of december till the 20th in kalpe um and then we have the, uh, the first team meeting without the bikes like we fly home from china the 24th or 23rd and yeah from 24th 25th we have a short team meeting where we we get to yeah measure our sizes for the clothing next year maybe some photo shoots and and this stuff preparing for yeah for the next winter or season and then maybe also a bit of an end of season party maybe yeah uh, <laughs> I, I would i would i could imagine that um if not already also in in china at the i i think there is a uci gala there so Probably there will also be be one party or two, and maybe even tomorrow already. If uh, if Viviana wins his last race for you guys, then as well. Or? For sure, that's that's for sure. I think that's that's a celebration worth, especially last race together with Ilya. It's been also for me a fantastic year to work together with a guy like him, um, super experienced and super great guy to work with. Um, yeah, I've been learning a lot from him, so I super, 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 yeah, happy to spend uh, one year with someone like him. Can, can you name one thing that you learned from him? Um, I would say like it's it's mostly things like off the bike to watch him. You know how 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 can how he can like focus for his his races and his uh, goals and how he can be so yeah quiet a guy and and still be on this high level um you know down to earth guy always working hard and uh, i think learning something these small things i think that's the really important things how to yeah to be become a great rider yeah awesome it definitely helps you in your development to becoming even a better rider um one more thing uh, we're gonna have to t- Tux Turbo Talks fan question of the week because um, maybe this is already your flight that we're hearing not sure um, <laughs> so we got a each week uh, we got questions coming in from people on the internet uh, asking for our guests and this week the question is from Janus Basnov and he wants to know in which race will your biggest result come in 2020 cool oh that's a tough question um, 
Oh, I would I would hope to say it will be in the in the Giro d'Italia if I would be so lucky to to do once again. I think it's for sure somewhere I would maybe target a high condition for next year um, to maybe to go for a stage or something that would be absolutely amazing. Um, but for sure, also it's it's hard to say uh, <laughs> where I will have my biggest result. But I I would say it's something like. Like the Giro would have been amazing to, to, yeah, to have a great, uh, great result. Yeah, you already tried this year. I think it a breakaway in the Giro, so maybe a couple more breakaways next year it would be pretty cool to see you in there. Exactly. I mean, then you have a have a big shot for for something great, and I will one hundred percent, yeah, go for that. All right. Well, we're not going to hold you up any longer so you can catch that flight to the Netherlands and uh, we can see you <laughs> tomorrow at the Tux Pro Classics. want to thank you for your time, Mikkel. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow and hopefully we're going to be a, a nice race for us. And hopefully a great goodbye present for Elia. Uh, thank yes. you. <laughs> Thanks again and good luck uh, tomorrow and obviously also in China. And then to wrap it up, people, I want to thank you all for listening to the Tux Turbo Talks this cycling season. Really hope you enjoyed uh, hearing from the world's best riders. And if you did so, please don't forget to leave a rating and a review. And also don't hesitate to subscribe or just go back to one of our previous episodes to hear all the ins and outs from the Pro Peloton. This was Rob Power with Mikko Honoré from the Koning Quickstep. Stay tuned for a new Tux Turbo Talks.